No? Okay. Okay. We are recording. Okay. Should we start it off with hello and welcome to? If you want. Hello and welcome to Fly on the Wall podcast. I'm your host, Nadia, and this is Jason. Hello. Hello. Um, This is episode two. And today's topic is... Jason? The climate deception. There you have it. Okay, stop talking like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's redo this here. Oh, you didn't like that? No. You don't like the... No, 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 no talking like this. Oh, that's racist. That's racist. Oh, that's so racist. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? <laughs> no, that's too bad. Okay, just I don't want to introduce. We'll okay. just go with the. Okay. Fruit flies. Fly. Okay. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about the climate deception. Mm-hmm. The climate deception. Yes. The climate deception. Deception. If you say it loud enough so, and repeat it over, they'll believe you. So Bernie Sanders was on Joe Rogan, so I don't think Naz has seen this yet. I haven't so. seen it, no. But love Joe Rogan's podcast. But hold on, I think I gotta switch it. Oh yeah, I gotta switch it over so you can see. There we go. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. Now we're getting to the end of your hour here, so climate change is obviously an enormous issue for our country and for the world. What what could be done, and what do you think you can do as president that can somehow or another slow down this this process? Well, first of all, we have to have a president who, unlike Trump, uh, believes in science, and I do. <laughs> what the fuck? And <laughs> this guy looks like he what the scientists the molest little children. As I mentioned earlier, is that we have fewer than twelve like years to transform our energy system, the or else there will be Why does he talk like that? damage done not only to our country but to the world now climate change is not just an american issue so we could do tomorrow do all the right things but if china and russia and india and the rest of the brazil and africa does not do the right thing china and and, russia make the progress we need so (laughs) here is what we have to do in my view number one we have to tell the fossil fuel industry that their short-term profits and they make a whole lot of money their short-term profits are not more important than the future oh, so of this planet. I don't think that's a hard financial sell to make. gain with you the climate. You cannot keep producing tax. a product which is destroying the planet in the United States and around the world. So, <laughs> okay, so uh, that's not affecting us. Besides, they're gonna try and have it so that no one can drive around anywhere. You can't. We all have to take public tra- public transportation, and it's all gonna be on social not credit even scores. Not or, even that. If no. they if they take out all fossil fuels and how are you supposed to get from point a to point b how is your food supposed to get from point a to point b if they just shut it down they like want that? they want everyone to stay in their districts like uh what's this called uh, uh, catching all, fire. all these extreme weather events we've been having lately so crazy you it's, know like our summer just started yeah like a week it's been a really ago. mild summer. very mild summer oh yeah. climate emergency yeah. So by saying that, you're saying you would have to move. We would have to move consciously away Absolutely. from fossil fuels. No if so, buts and maybe. And if we do everyone that, how the do elite. you tell the yeah, fossil fuel companies? Everyone but the elite. You tell them you mm-hmm. can't yeah. sell fossil fuels yeah. anymore. There are a variety of ways to do that, but that is the bottom line. This guy's and, and voice is creepy. By the way, in the midst of that, we do what yeah. we call is a um, a just transition. The guy out on the oil rig today simply wants to feed his family, and the coal miners today want to feed their families and we're not going to leave them i'm a pro worker i have the, probably the strongest pro worker record of any member yeah, of the congress so it's not energy. my intention to throw these guys out on the and women out oh, on the communist street supporter too and ignore the pain mm-hmm. that they will go through we are proposing billions of dollars to rebuild those communities and make sure that those guys okay what are they rebuilding new jobs so we're not what? Just spending billions of dollars where? The only, see, the only place i see the them spending billions of dollars is in other countries taking yeah, our money and throwing it away what are or they throwing it into their what pockets, are they recreating actually. what what are they really recreating they're recreating new jobs for for the people that they're displacing apparently they're from, okay if they're displacing us with uh and they want to get rid of fossil fuels uh, why don't they actually come up with a 
free energy because we all know it's a, uh, it's available, but they kill anyone or they pay off anyone who creates it. Because free energy it. doesn't uh, produce money. Exactly. So it's yeah, all it doesn't of, produce well, profits. Everything has to do with money, power, with the elite. That they are producing, which is now carbon emissions, is destroying the planet. So we have to move away from okay, where are their fossil graphs? fuel in a very bold way into energy efficiency. Right now, in my own state of Vermont and all over this country, there okay, are I'm building. Done listening to him. He's, Honestly, he's there's so much other ways. Retarded. Yeah, he's not not very bright. Honestly, they're just pushing their own fucking agenda. It's really fucking annoying. And people's got people have to like wake the fuck up, wake up masses, wake up. If we continue to believe these fucking assholes, then everything's going to change and they're going to have... It's going to be 1984. Well, I know it's not everyone that believes these assholes. No. But be- <clears throat> and we do have independent media out yes. in Canada Speaking that of, actually know the truth. A pessimistic of anticipation of rebel. the future. What a great way to put it. Uh, I've got some terrible news for you, uh, Tom. We're all going to die in 18 <laughs> months. And now it's 18 months. 12 yeah. years. And they keep changing it around. Promising us oh. a headline from the BBC, climate change. And by the way, the 12-year thing was in, I think, 2018, which would make it line up perfectly for uh, 2030, The you know, like the 2030 agenda they have. Okay, but why is, um, I love their picture they've chosen. Yeah, it's like, like a drought. <laughs> yeah exactly uh, meanwhile it's been the mildest summer we've ever had yeah for At like the last are, 10 even, years e- even over in europe and the uk they have like three days of heat and they're like oh it's climate change it's like no that's just a just a little bit of heat a little heat wave that's it uh what we got married what 15 years ago and that day was way hotter than it was all now. summer so all, far <laughs> all summer so far like so i don't know what the hell they're talking about yeah. They're trying to push their well, agenda, and people are believing the planet them. planet make that 18 months. These people are like a doomsday cult. They're just anticipating the comet to come, and they're going to, you know, just Definitely jump on the comet and go Get everyone else. to drink it's the Kool-Aid. Really, yeah. um, it's really frightening. <laughs> and a lot of people are. How I know. They, it's, it, like you say, there's a, a hopelessness for the future that I think is really bad mm-hmm. to instill in an entire generation of people. Um, but I, I think they just need the urgency so that they can justify how much they want to tax me. Well, also, I, I think it's that media, th- you know, mainstream media thrive on negative news. They do. And they do. In particular, for sure. on this issue, I was actually speaking to an editor of a leading Eastern Canadian newspaper. I won't say who because <laughs> it's somewhat confidence. I asked him, you know, why don't you show both sides of the climate debate? He said, oh, well, we agree with David Suzuki. I said, yes, but do you have anybody on staff who has even a Bachelor of Science so that you could actually judge as to who was more likely right? And he said, well, no. And <laughs> so then I said, well, then why do you do it? He said, well, our advertisers wouldn't like it. So I thought about it. Yes, that's it's true. All about money. Negative news. Everything's sells. about money. A big headline that says, you know, global temperature has risen a trivial amount in the last, well, since the beginning oh, really? of the 20th century, it's virtually nothing. And even since 1880, we're talking about one degree, which has been it's a nothing. beneficial thing. That kind of beneficial headline. Beneficial for sure. Fast. Look at So if you're going growing. for yeah. high circulation numbers, yes, catastrophe sells. But there's another factor, Sheila. Many of the sponsors in newspapers are using the climate scare to generate their sales, okay? Mm-hmm. They're saying, buy our product and we're and reducing taxation. greenhouse gases. We're gonna oh, save yeah. the world. For sure. Now, if taxation. you spend $12,000 on a radio, or sorry, a newspaper ad, the last thing you want People is still Tim Patterson or Tim ads. Ball or Ian Clark writing an op-ed on so. the other side saying, you can't stop climate change. So I thought about it. Yeah, it's it's largely financially driven when it comes to the media. It's largely, completely. They're left wing yeah. and it's part of their laundry list of ideals to support this, like but uh, I think it's also largely ideas. financial. That's- so, that was a good article, actually. Yeah. Well, not an article, but that was a good interview. Um, it was. Honestly, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So there's one more. This one's kind of long. I don't know if we're going to go through the whole thing, but... Well, let's just see how much... Uh, oh, I like this one. Yeah, let's go... Honestly, everyone should look at this. Uh, we'll put it in the description below. This uh, YouTube uh, video is actually something worth wa- worth watching. I don't think it. Ha- I don't believe it has enough views for what it is. No, this needs to be seen by. It everyone, needs to be probably. seen by everyone because 
these people are very skilled at what they do. They have... Okay, let's just watch it. Yeah, let's just watch it. Okay. I want to introduce three phrases. The first phrase is, no danger. Should make everyone happy. No danger. The third, the second one is fabricated data. Love that. And the third is groupthink. Now, our findings that I'm going to go through are in response to the CSIRO's document. And this is my response. But you'll see from a link within here that it actually ties to a huge website that comprehensively presents the empirical evidence. Empirical evidence is what decides science. It's the hard data, the physical measurements, the physical observations, the hard facts. And it is linked to this document. Sorry, uh, I like how this guy just goes in behind and just starts recording from behind. Like, I know, right? He, what are you getting? He's doing about as good jo- as good a job as these scientists. Where, I know, right? Like, I don't know what this guy's recording, but... <laughs> I think he's recording the crowd. I, well... Like, to be on his defense. I, I, maybe, but just like... <laughs> I think he, crowd he, reaction is kind of where he's, just where he's at. Where he where he is is kind of... Well, I is, feel like... I feel like you're... <laughs> It's just funny because he just walked up. Uh, yeah. No, it's funny. He's distracting. I totally yeah. understand. Yeah. But I think he's getting ca- a crowd reaction. And you're welcome to scrutinize it. You'll see that in a little while. I don't know how many people are there. Probably not that Amazingly, many Amazingly. <laughs> it's like five. <laughs> we asked, I asked, the CSIRO's chief climate scientist, what in the last 2,000 years, what in the climate record for the last 2,000 years points to imminent danger? They refuse to state anything. And he goes away. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> there is no danger. The empirical evidence shows there is no danger. There's no danger. In the climate I know. record. So people The second thing that we watches. learned was that the CSIRO has no empirical evidence that proves carbon dioxide from our activity affects climate. None. The third is that some of the CSIRO's claims actually contradict empirical evidence. They are unscientific. The onus of proof is on the CSIRO. Minister Hunt, former Minister for Energy and Cli- for Climate Change, sorry, has stated that he relies upon the CSIRO's advice, the Bureau of advice. Meteorology's advice, and advice from the Inter- Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the UN's climate body. Yeah, it's the that's UN. the word. One advice. of those bodies has any empirical <clears throat> evidence. It's done by the UN. The UN's just a. a s- no, but it's not. There's advice. It's nothing yeah. more than that. So yeah, he's, it's advice. Yeah, it, yeah exactly. But you see who's pushing it, the UN. Exactly. The UN's pushing for their one world government. They want to control everything and the everyone. UN. They want yeah, the UN ultimate control. Super you, corrupt. 1984, the whole deal. Yeah. They want to do it all. Well, if you uh, want to look further into it, Maurice Strong. That we are affecting climate. We also learned that the CSIRO has done no due diligence on the data on which it bases its claims. Hmm. Now, that is astounding. We are paying tens of millions of dollars to the CSIRO, and they have not done their due diligence. Instead, they rely on corrupted data from the Bureau of Meteorology, corrupted data from NASA's Goddard Institute of Space Studies, where a handful of people dictate what's going on, and we have, and they rely, the CSIRO relies upon the UN IPCC's corrupted data. And yet this CSIRO's advice is the result or is the basis for climate, par- for the climate policies of each of our major parties. It's another person in the background, just like taking pictures of the back of their heads. I want to look at the fabricated data before handing over to Tony. There are places in the Bureau of Meteorology's record where there's no data being taken, no data measurements, and yet they're given measurements. There are places such as Rutherglen in the Bureau of Meteorology's record that the real data shows a cooling trend. Yeah. And it's been manipulated into a Seen warming those. trend. So we can, in fact, say that Definitely global warming like in a computer is man made. Exactly. But it's not at Hazelwood Power Station. The Australian temperatures are corrupted. We saw in the, in the records of the Bureau of Meteorology in the 1880s to 1890s temperatures that were warmer than today. Yep. Warmer than. I and remember then we warmer a, summers. We've seen a cyclical <laughs> years ago. increase, decrease, increase, decrease, warming, cooling, warming, cooling. So what happened after the 1880s and 1890s was it dropped to around the lowest point in the Bureau's records, to 1910. That's where they started. it. And the Bureau and the CSIRO, when they present us with the temperature data, 
They omit everything before, two, before 1910. So we start from a very low point. Then the temperature increases yeah. well, to the 1930s you, you and 40s. take a look at the graphs there. They started and then from it decreases not that long ago. 40 years. Yeah. The longest temperature trend in the last 120 years is 40 years of cooling while we were pumping out carbon dioxide around the planet. Exactly. Carbon dioxide did not cause that cooling. Yep. It did not. And then it increased this, slightly. Right and then we've had 20 years of no temperature rise despite China and India putting out massive amounts of carbon dioxide. That yep. should and say what's happened a is lot. the bureaus reduced the 1930s temperatures, increased the temperatures during the cooling period, and increased the temperatures later. So instead of seeing this, like 1984. we see this. The hockey I'll stick. now introduce Tony Heller, who will be talking more about the corruption of yeah, temperature. Tony right? Heller is good. He knows a lot of information. Thank you, Senator Roberts, yeah. and thanks for inviting me. This is my first visit to Australia. I'm having a wonderful time here. It's a great country. I've met wonderful people, beautiful, love the wildlife here. And what, what Senator Roberts was saying was absolutely correct about the Bureau of Meteorology temperature record. I've looked at it in some detail. And th there's fairly good records going back to, say, about the 1850s, 1860s. And what we see is that 1910 was the coolest period in the Australian temperature record, and that um, that's where um, Bureau of Meteorology starts their, their graphs. Of course, if you start at the coldest temperature, you're going to see an increase um, Obviously. moving yeah. forwards to the present. It's their agenda. You know, had they created a graph, their graph started in, say, 1878 or around there, we would see little or no warming across the Australian temperature record. But what really got me interested in the work that um, Senator Roberts was doing was the Q&A show with um, Professor um, Brian Cox from um, the BBC presenter. And I saw that, and what Brian Cox did was uh, he held up a graph of NASA temperatures showing temperatures <laughs> warming. Look at this graph. Look at this graph. Bad. And if you don't believe this, you probably don't believe that NASA ever landed a man on the moon either. And, 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 that, and that's something I've studied quite a bit, and I oh, was shit. sort of stunned by this because I realized that uh, <laughs> Professor Cox had probably actually not done any research on this subject at all, or very little, if some. Because the actual people who went that's to fine. the moon, the, the Apollo astronauts and people who are associated with it, have been very critical of the NASA t climate and temperature programs. In fact, there, there's NASA. only one scientist yeah. who's ever set foot on the NASA moon. Lies. It's Dr. Harrison yeah. Schmidt. Um, he's a more controversy, Harvard PhD. He was a U.S. A senator. He was my senator in New Mexico. And he's been a very outspoken critic of NASA's climate activities. And similarly, there was a group of um, 49 Na of NASA's top people from the Apollo program, um, scientists, engineers, administrators, and astronauts, sent a, sent a uh, um, letter to the NASA administrator several years ago criticizing them for their climate work, saying that they were embarrassing the agency, the work they were doing was substandard. Because they're not working. They were damaging they're the collecting a paycheck which the Apollo and doing nothing people had created and for creating fake graphs. So uh, Professor Cox's appeal to authority was very um, poorly taken. Um, he, he didn't know um, obviously didn't know who the people were who were behind it. And the people who were making these graphs had nothing to do with the Apollo program, and the people in the Apollo program have been very critical of their work. Um, so it, and that's now focusing in on specifically, you probably remember the picture, Brian Cox held up this graph, said, I brought the graph. Um, he clearly did not know the history of that graph, um, which is something which I've studied in great detail. If we go back to 1974, graphs look very different. Um, the National Center for Atmospheric and Research in Boulder, Colorado, where I live now, published a graph in, in, 19, in 1974, they published a graph showing that there was no global warming from 1870 to 1970. Um, they showed that there was a lot of warming prior to 1940, and then a very strong cooling trend from 1940 to 1970. Yeah, so obviously our emissions do nothing. Like they're, they're, they, they they're thought we were going to do an ice age. Yeah, because the U.S. National Academy of Sciences published a very well, similar. Well, I think we're closer to an ice age than anything. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. we're warming. A lot of cooling well, from maybe our CO2 is helping warm up so that we can. And we no longer still, see that in you know, the grow food NASA temperature graphs. Well, I think I think because we're still procreating and we're not doing as late as 1990. 
agenda. I think NASA still it's had. Creating um, they showed no warming, warming from 1870 maybe. to 1970. But after maybe. the year 2000, NASA started changing their graphs, which is the point that it's Senator Roberts lie. was originally they making lie. with Professor um, Cox, was that the temperature data has been altered. And you can see it right on the NASA website, and I'll be showing this later in the week, right on the NASA website, you can look and see in the year 2000, they showed about 0.5 C total warming. In the year 2012, they, it, they pushed it up to about 0.9 C warming. Now they show about almost 1.5 C warming over land. And, and the remarkable thing about this is that this has all occurred since the year 2000. But if we look at actual satellite data, which is much more accurate, much more comprehensive, we see that um, satellites show that there's been no warming during that period. So NASA has actually tripled the amount of global warming since the year 2000 at a time when satellites show no warming. And this is very it's all a bunch of bullshit. NASA is I know, they're the just, US space uh, agency, so why are they ignoring sure. their own satellite data? And I've looked trying to push their own agenda. Of detail at the U.S. It's a great video, record, which by the is, way. Um, produced by the mostly by the National Ocean, Oceanographics and Atmospheric Administration (NOAA). They they publish two um, data sets. One is called the raw data set, which is the actual data which comes off the thermometers they measured, and another one which is the final data set, which is what they release to the public generally in their graphs. And the raw data, the actual thermometer data, which comes from this incredible network of very good, contiguous 1,200 stations in the U.S., shows that the U.S. has been cooling for 80 to 90 years. <laughs> but the graphs they released to the public show Where's a warming trend, and it's all because they've altered the data. Yeah. It's all right, the, all well, right exactly. there on the This should be a fraud. Uh, website. That, like, they should be, for anyone we should have see. a class well, action lawsuit, is, and we I should get should be the government audited, yeah. but have a privatized company that's that hired by the people. Not, not an internal audit. Not an internal audit. Tremendous amount. But then again, there would be another This is only due to the fact that they've altered the data. And, and, and I would say that you know this is not how science is done. So what we see is we see this tremendous manipulation. And it's of always data of it's always about consensus and and all this bullshit. But the he he's saying right here this is not what science is about. They're no, it's manipulating. Not. They're manipulating all the data. Hard evidence. Yeah, the, hard they're, evidence. They're, they're manipulating all the data and then saying that the world's going to end and it's a bunch of bullshit. It's a big fraud, a big scheme. No, yeah, they just and want our money. They're taking our money to build up an army against us. I don't know an why An army else. against us and they want to control us. Well, they've already semi-controlled us, but they, yeah. they're they having a hard they, time. They want full control. They're having a hard time because there's too many people now. <laughs> yeah. A degree centigrade or possibly even more. And at the same time, NASA comes out and they make statements like, this was the hottest year ever by 0 0.3 degrees centigrade, <laughs> but they've altered the data by one degree centigrade. So it's pretty meaningless, the kind of things they're saying. And, and my <laughs> yeah. final comment, Everyone's got to watch it. Or is, um, I've worked read on it. many very mission critical projects, life and death projects, um, where everything has to be absolutely right. And I would say after looking at the NASA data, the way they've worked with the data over the last 10 years, had they been in charge of the Apollo moon mission, that rocket never would have gotten off the ground. It's a nice ending nice statement. Oh, thank you very much. Fuck and you. I agree. Drop the my mic first moment. visit to Australia, <laughs> and, and it's a great honor to be here and to help Malcolm Roberts in, in exposing what I consider the greatest deception in history. And I don't think that's hyperbole. Thank you. There have been deceptions, but none on the scale that this has occurred, where it's affected every country, every citizen, and policies are being driven that are detrimental to progress and advance and longer life. So it, it's a very important issue for me. Like the I've been studying climate too. for 42 oh, years. When I got into yeah, the so business, can't global cooling was the consensus. And yeah. I was as opposed to that as I am to the warming, because I knew, looking at the long-term record of climate, that it fluctuates and varies all the time. It's always changing. Because the planet repairs itself. Will. And I also realized that what was going on was well within natural variability. But of course, the story that was out there was, this is unnatural, therefore it must be something that humans are causing. And what happened in the, in the cooling Why trend was they us? said, oh, the temperature's going down. Oh, and simple linear trend, it'll keep on cooling. But then, of course, it did, because it was natural, started to go up again in the 80s. And then the trend was upwards, and everybody got on what I call the trend wagon. <laughs> the question Kinda that, like that should hockey. come out of, yeah. of uh, uh, Tony's presentation to you is, why on earth 
was this manipulation going on? Because one of the things I find when I talk to audiences and explain what is happening, the question immediately is, what's the motive? What is the purpose of this adjustment of the data? And, and I, I can tell you uh, how it came about. The whole uh, global warming and climate thing is a subset of the environmental trend that we're in. And environment wow. is very necessary, very good shift, paradigm shift. But certain people grabbed it and saw the political and financial opportunities in it. A group called the Club of Rome, Bam. which was formed in Rome in 1968, he took the Malthus idea that the world population would outgrow the food supply, and they applied that to all resources. They said the world population would outgrow all of the resources. And they produced a study with simple computer trends called limits to growth. That, by the way, Sky's is where the, the words peak oil came in. Oh, we're going to reach a peak in the amount of oil, and we see how that's been completely uh, destroyed. Everyone should hear this. On the climate side of it, they wanted uh, something that was affecting the whole globe. Yeah, exactly. Because they knew Collective that they could group. not get every nation on Earth to agree on something. So they wanted a, a threat from space, if you want. The yeah. whole world yeah. is threatened by global Problem warming. Reaction, solution. That's why global Bam. warming and climate became the vehicle of choice for their political agenda. Makes sense. And the key person in all of this, and um, in a, a, an obscure book, which I, is very difficult we need that right book. now, and, and I, I recommend this to you as journalists, because Elaine Dewar was an investigative journalist at the Hamilton Spectator in Canada, and she yeah. We need had a list of all of the environmentalists in Canada and wanted to write a book in praise of what they were doing. Actually, saving the planet, I think the whole thing is online. Work. You can read it. Oh, the can more you? she yeah. did her research, we the don't more have to pay $1,100? We're going to read it. Well, I'll post the link in that, the that, description. Uh, people like Elizabeth Sounds good. May, the head of our Green Party, don't and let Maurice this get Strong burned. in particular. Now, Maurice Strong is a name that you should all become familiar with. Piece he of died shit. recently in China. And he was in China because he could not got, go back to the United States because they wanted him for involvement in the food for oil crisis in Iraq. And that what Strong did shit. was, mm -hmm. and, 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 and in the interview with Elaine Durer, she, she said, well, what's the problem? And, and he said, the problem for the planet are the industrialized nations. It's our responsibility There's to get rid of them. <laughs> the same because guy. Because they, they saw that it was the industrialized nation. Everybody was using too many resources, but the industrialized nations were using them at an even greater rate. So we had to like, shut down not the a industrialized good nations. I want you to think about how you would do that. Because one of the things that I found is amazing about looking at these people is not only do they have an idea, but they, <laughs> they have ways of implementing it. Maurice Strong is one of those people. And so he, in, in response, uh, well, first of all, Lane Dewar said to him, why don't you run for politics? He said, no, you can't do anything as a politician. She said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to go to the UN where I can get all the money I want and not be accountable to anybody. The UN. He went to the UN. Yeah, so the UN. Yep. Who are they, who are they accountable to? No one. Yeah. We go to and them. And who, who checks the UN? No one. Do they? But why do they control everything then? Because they're, they're international law. Yeah. And well, they, they're a ministry. And they, they write the laws, the international laws. Yeah. Who are they, though? We it's, only know. It's. The UN. I know, but they, created, they don't even get it was, elected in. It was created by the Rockefellers. What, what else is there to say? It's the elite creating their own programs to control everyone. That's all it is. That's all the United Nations is. We give over all our money. And what do we get in return? We get governance. We get people telling us what we can and can't do. We pay for that. Yeah, and, and we're funding them. We're to, funding these people. We're funding to our own enslavement. Us. And they're extorting us at a rate of like craziness. And he it's set crazy. up the United Nations Environment pro uh, Program, out of which came the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. That panel was set up deliberately to isolate CO2 as the cause of the problem. Now, how did they do that? Well, I think you have been around long enough to know that when commissions of inquiry are, are set up, the politicians try to limit them by the terms of reference. I know that. I've been on lots of commissions of inquiry. Mm. With the like uh, Intergovernmental face. Panel on Climate Change, <laughs> they were told only to look at human causes of climate change. Only. The they problem don't. with that is you can't possibly identify any fraction that might be due to humans if you don't know what the natural variability is and what's causing it. Exactly. So that was the problem. 
it focused, of course, it allowed them then to focus on the greenhouse gases. Just like the focus groups. But they only focused on one of the greenhouse races. gases. They focused on CO2. Why did they focus on, or why didn't they focus on, on CO2, by the way, there's only 4% of the greenhouse gases. How many people know that? They completely ignored 95% of the greenhouse gases, which is water vapor. Yep. Yep. And they said, oh, yeah, humans produce water vapor, but it's such a small amount, it doesn't affect anything. So 95% of the potential greenhouse effect is completely ignored in those IPCC reports. And so, so you see the, the problem. Once you set up a lie, and, you, and, and by the way, the, the way Maury Strong did it with his organizational skills, he, the IPCC was a point where people appointed by the World Meteorological Organization, which is made up of every national weather agency around the world. That's why CSIRO and, B and the Bureau of, of Meteorology are involved. It's those bureaucrats that are running the show. Strong knew that. He knew that he'd go, they'd go back and tell their politicians, hey, we've got to deal with this global oil issue. It's then the end of the world. <laughs> That's how the whole thing has it's come about. We're now at the How point, many times course, has it been it, the end of the world? Apart. It's always the end of the world. Yeah, like, what, 2012? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? 2012. Yeah. Sorry. 2012? 2012 was the end of the Mayan calendar, but like maybe it was the end of something. You know what I mean? Maybe. I think it was. Um, so, of course, they, to they, they try later. to introduce the Kyoto maybe. Protocol to, to punish the developed nations for their use of fossil fuels, take the money for there to the, the developing nations that were suffering a great transfer of wealth, that was exposed when what the scientists were doing was it, were, the corrupt science was exposed through the leaked emails from the University of East Anglia. They then replaced the Kyoto Protocol with, at the Durban Conference with a Green Climate Fund. That was approved recently at Paris and was ratified in, in the last couple of days, signed into law. That's where we're at now, where we've got global policy based upon completely false, yes, deliberately global policy science. Because once you start over a lie, false, you either come out false, and say, I told a lie, false or data. you start admitting the truth. And for bureaucrats, that's a very difficult thing to do. Oh, they're all Thank bullshitters. <laughs> Fucking bullshitters. Every single one of them. Should we listen to the questions? Yeah, but it's hard I, to hear I, the it's questions. It's really hard to hear. Why glacier is retreating? They're not retreating, not all of them. We only monitor about 10% of the world's glaciers, and 50% are advancing and 50% are <laughs> retreating. The problem by using glaciers is they are more about precipitation than they are about temperature. What causes a glacier to advance or retreat is the amount of snowfall above what's called the fern line. And that's called so, science. Uh, exactly. They just cherry this guy knows glaciers what the fuck that are retreating and say, oh, here's a glacier that's Don't retreating. Don't listen to fucking I'll little I'll tell you Dickie. the ironic thing. When Cameron <laughs> was running for office, they flew him to Norway to a glacier, and he Bull stood on Dickie. there and talked about retreating glaciers. He was on one that was advancing. Yeah, go ahead. Right. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm a geologist, and um, I've studied glaciers rather extensively. And... Um, yeah, 20,000 years ago, like we just had the World Series in the United States between Chicago and Cleveland. Both of those cities were under a mile of ice. Glaciers have been retreating steadily for the last 20,000 years. Uh, we can look back up. When the largest glacier in Alaska, the Muir Glacier, when it was first discovered in the 18th century, extended all the way out to the sea. By the time John Muir, who it's named after, who was the founder of the Sierra Club, saw it in the, in the middle of the 19th century, it had retreated 30 miles. If you look through the literature, we know that glaciers have been retreating for a very long time. With the reason that glaciers are retreating... The, It's really hard to hear them. I know. Well, well if, if you look at graphs of sea, sea level rise, sea level rise has been rising steadily for 20,000 years. The first people who came to North America walked across the Bering Strait because crazy. there was so much water locked up in ice at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Sea level had dropped you know, 400 feet below what it yeah, is now. Yeah, you'd totally be able to cross able to that. Walk yeah, totally. So we can see from sea level that the glaciers have been melting steadily. And that's what happens because we're in an interglacial period right now. Glaciers will continue to melt until we start back into another ice, ice age. Ice age, yeah. Um, it's Makes a, sense. And do we want to be in another example. ice age? No. You're sitting there no. already. We'll You've got a, a glass at the bar. It's a global warming. Yeah, no. Those guys keep We'll be dead from it, apparently. 
they're, mm -hmm. and, and they're going to melt until they're gone. And we've only got, got 18, 18 months. months. Does that indicate that the temperature <laughs> in the room is increasing? Jinx. No, of course not. All that it means <laughs> is that the temperature is above freezing. And that's what an interglacial period is. There's tremendous amounts of records showing that glacier has been melting for hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, you know, 20,000 years. Why wouldn't they melting. melt? So that's not if evidence it, if it of raises global a warming. Degree, All that gonna, is evidence of is yeah. that the temperature, yeah. average temperature in these regions is above freezing as it has been for the last 20,000 years. Yeah, exactly. I have self-funded this, actually. Um, I wanted to come to Australia anyway. I, I, I write a blog. Um, a number of people gave small donations to help out, but I, I'm paying for the trip myself. Does this guy and have I a YouTube? Personally paid for Tim he does. To come down. Nice. He's got lots of stuff. Uh, you want to okay, see it? Yeah, well, we should put it in the des description below. What about the other guy? It's Tony Heller. The, this guy here, I'm on his YouTube. Is Malcolm yeah, no, Roberts. No, no, Malcolm Roberts? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so Malcolm Roberts. Who's and the other guy? The other guy's from Canada. I don't know if he has one or not. Okay. He, they must have like some website. Oh, he does. Right. Well, it, it's very hard to argue against, you know, to debate sort of vague claims like this. I'm, I'm you perfectly happy to discuss with you at any time any specific um, claim that's been made that you say has been debunked, and I think I can make a very effective argument. And he will be here with Professor Ball tomorrow in this same room <laughs> from eight o'clock till ten p.m. To, to deliver a presentation, slides, all the data you want will be there and they'll be open and uh, yeah. open. And if anyone wants to check out this information, uh, Tony Heller has no, his this, own this website that has all patient. this information on it. I'll post it in the description as well. Nice. Well, we'll be making sure that the, we'll be making sure, first of all, that uh, the ministers uphold their responsibilities to the parliament. We'll be holding them accountable to the people of Australia, because in Queensland and I all wish we'd have more people we working for us like him. Of being oh, I know, right? And that's what's happening. These, These ministers are, are either part Tommy of Robinson's the scam or they are like this complicit too. by not doing their due diligence. I started that program we nine years ago, <laughs> and they still have not done their due diligence. I'm helping them to do it. What we'll be doing is making sure that we can help the ministers and the chief and the chief executive of the CSIRO fulfill their responsibilities to the Australian population. Nice. Well, what I've been doing for the last eight years, asking for the empirical evidence, and then we'll be taking it a bit further than that. Sure, answer. you... I have never used the word conspiracy. <laughs> never. No, the These people assholes. who are they're using totally the trying to turn it around. Hang on, just a minute here. The people who are using the word conspiracy are people like you, and it's quite nice. often used to denigrate because the facts are clear. Exactly, facts. Exactly. They need to go with the facts. Yeah. I have referred to bankers because the bankers are. Hang on, just you asked me a question. Do you want me to answer, or are you going to? Would you like to come up and answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm trying to. Are you going to let me be? Are you going to be quiet and let me answer? This is a trillion dollar industry we are facing exactly. down, my friend. A trillion dollar industry. The yep. major banks themselves have raised that very fact. And by the way, the chief executive of the CSIRO up until 2014 was on the advisory board of the bank. Also, all those cancer walks and funds and foundations, people just need to like stop. Stop funding them because Stop they're actually even going, going to, them. to the wrong people. Yeah, you're raising all Honestly, this money so that all uh, these years, do you think there's more no money to go fly on their jets all over the place? Exactly. And, but after all these years, do you really think there's no cure, cure for cancer? Yeah, it's, it's simple, simple fucking cure, and people, it's just a money making thing. Uh, chemotherapy. How much do people pay in chemotherapy a year? It's I ridiculous know, to amounts. Poison yourself. They like. Yeah. Take your money to kill you. Yeah, exactly. Anyways. Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and the Rothschilds Australia Bank, and they, and they have said that they will be seeking to make trillions of dollars profit from this scam on carbon dioxide trading. Scam, system. he said it. Al Gore was a member, his company was one of the members of the Chicago Climate it's Exchange. Coming. Morris Strong, the criminal who died overseas in China. From the UN. He was a member of the Chicago Climate Exchange. Goldman Sachs was a member of the Chicago Climate Exchange. Barack Obama, through the Joyce Foundation, has Ouch. connections with that. 
They use through foundation. Facts. You see that, you guys? Use foundations. Oh, they're right all foundations. I know, but through foundations. Like the World Wildlife Foundation. I know, but people have to realize foundations are another word for tax write-off. Yeah. Or way I can hide my money. Yeah. Oh, this guy is angry. Do you want to ask him the question? I have been very clear about that. Surely, if you've done that research, you would have read my, my extensive material saying there is no one religion involved. I oh. have got nothing against Risk any particular religion uh, in, in regard to this climate so scam at all. Prejudice. I'm, I'm so working very card. closely and have so worked very that. closely when with prominent members. When they have nothing, they go yeah. to race or prejudice or anything actually religion. Actually, very close family links to the Jewish community. Susie Smead, who is one of the founders of the, of the Galileo movement, escaped from the Holocaust camp when she was two years of age. And she told me in that first meeting that she's a Hungarian Jew. I love her dearly. I, I respect and admire the Jews. So doing and for the anyone Trump. like you to try and insinuate that a scientist and an engineer would want, to, would want to further take the Jewish people into disregard after hundreds of years of being belted, murdered, and prejudiced is despicable. We are... Well said. You can, you can link me to a website all you want, but I have never said anything against any specific religion in regard to this because I've never seen any evidence whatsoever. Is that clear? No evidence whatsoever linking this to any religion. I just want to follow up with that. Um, first of all, I'm Jewish. Yeah. And I don't appreciate <laughs> these sort of insinuations against Senator Roberts. Um, second of all, about the conspiracy thing, I always hear this thing of, you know, how can you take on 5,000, 10,000, however many thousand scientists? Well, the people doing the temperature data, it's just a very small handful of people. Yeah, And these exactly. other five or 10,000 okay. scientists we hear about all the time, their work, the quality of their work depends on this very small group of people, particularly NASA and NOAA and a few yeah. other groups, on the quality of their work. <laughs> if the temperature data they're putting out oh, is wrong, that impacts the quality of all of the climate research which derives off that. So that's why it's so terribly important that we look at this seriously. Why are we, they manipulating the data? Is, are their manipulations accurate? And how is that affecting the conclusions of this vast body of scientists? Hang on. Someone over here, Vizor. We have had a meeting this morning. I can confirm that. Um, we personally support Rod, and we always have through this. He's going through a, a very difficult time emotionally and mentally. It's a very difficult time. We recognize that and are personally supporting him. Um, it would not be appropriate for me to comment on the specifics of the situation right now. It's part of the high court process, or will be, and, uh, and Pauline Hanson, yeah, our I can't really leader, hear will be making a statement in the Senate No, but this with the, who they're talking about, I don't know what I know, it sucks about. that we can't hear. Well, I'd like to get the facts first because I don't know about them. So um, that, that's something that's probably something that'll have to come out in the near future. Well, you can ask any questions you want to, but we are here talking about one of the world's biggest ever scams that is costing, yeah, hang on just exactly. a minute, hang on just a minute, that is costing Queenslanders and Australians billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. And Canadians. Well, yeah, Australians and Canadians are in the same boat. Yeah. It's all funded by... F thank you very much for your attention funded this morning. Funded by us. <laughs> yeah, I your guess in term, in term, funded by us, but we're paying for the monarch. We're paying for our own demise. Pretty much. For our own enslavement. We're paying for our own oh, we enslavement. Are. Being taxed and to death. I think they are done. Yeah, they're done. That was a good. That was a very good, very good, um, very good one. Whew, so I'm here. So this concludes Final episode thoughts? two. Or Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, that was a really good video. Um, we'll put the uh, description, the link in the. Description below. I can't talk. Oh my God, sorry. Uh, what are your final thoughts? I think I need to go with what you're thinking. Well, my final thoughts are that uh, this whole climate change thing is a bunch of bullshit. Well, it's definitely it's, a scam. It's a big scam. It's and for monetary gain, or actually, not just monetary gain. It's also for power, power gain. It's 
It's to control everyone. To That's control. Plain and simple. How do you control everyone? How do you control everyone? You got to control everything that they do. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Oh, well, and I urge everyone to read uh, 1984 because I think uh, it's kind of where we're headed. And I'll uh, see if I can link in the description below the book uh, Cloak of Green. Oh, yeah. Um, I believe the um, whole book is available online. Don't pay $1,100 for it on yeah, Amazon. They've, been, they've done a massive book burning on that. Like yeah. uh, You can barely find any around anywhere. It's really ridiculous. Anyways. This concludes episode two of Fly on the Wall. Hope you enjoy. Please tell us your thoughts in the comments below. Please let us know what you'd like to us to talk about in our next And like, podcast. share, comment, subscribe. 